Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This apparently won the Man Booker Prize in 2005. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through some of my tabs, and then I'm going to give you some overall thoughts at the end. Uh, a few overall thoughts to begin with, or at least my attempt at making this make sense. It's kind of a slow burner, almost mystery-like, in that you're slowly discovering this sort of pretty evil world out there. Um, it's similar to our own, but different. And... Um, yeah, a lot of the action takes place at like a, I guess it's like a boarding school. Um, so I'm going to read you the blurb anyway. In one of the most acclaimed and original novels of recent years, Kazuo Shiguru imagines the life of a group of students growing up in a darkly skewed version of contemporary England. Narrated by Kathy, now 31, Never Let Me Go hauntingly dramatises her attempts to come to terms with her childhood at the seemingly idyllic Hailsham School and with the fate that has always awaited her and her closest friends in the wider world. A story of love, friendship and memory, Never Let Me Go is charged throughout with a sense of the fragility of life. So I like this, this kind of sets up how difficult it is to find privacy here. I suppose this might sound odd, but at Hailsham, the lunch queue was one of the better places to have a private talk. It was something to do with the acoustics in the Great Hall. All the hubbub and the high ceilings meant that so long as you lowered your voices, stood quite close, and made sure your neighbours were deep in their own chat, you had a fair chance of not being overheard. In any case, we weren't exactly spoilt for choice. Quiet places were often the worst, because there was always someone likely to be passing with an earshot. And as soon as you looked like you were trying to sneak off for a secret talk, the whole place seemed to sense it within minutes, and you'd have no chance. I mean, one of the things with this book as well is, is that it's beautifully written, so I could read pretty much anything out and it would sound good. But um, I, you know, I thought these these two uh, paragraphs were pretty good at building the world. There was the time, for example, maybe a few weeks after the talk by the pond, when Miss Lucy was taking us for English. We'd been looking at some poetry, but had somehow drifted onto talking about soldiers in World War II being kept in prison camps. One of the boys asked if the fences around the camps had been electrified, and then someone else had said how strange it must have been living in a place like that, where you could commit suicide any time you like just by touching a fence. This might have been intended as a serious point but the rest of us thought it pretty funny. We were all laughing and talking at once, and then Laura, typical of her, got up on her seat and did a hysterical impersonation of someone reaching out and getting electrocuted. For a moment, things got riotous, with everyone shouting and mimicking touching electric fences. I went on watching Miss Lucy through all this, and I could see, just for a second, a ghastly expression come over her face as she watched the class in front of her. Then, I kept watching carefully. She pulled herself together, smiled and said, It's just as well the fences at Hailsham aren't electrified. You get terrible accidents sometimes. Another interesting little section here, um, gay sex, incidentally, was something we were even more confused about. For some reason we called it umbrella sex. If you fancied someone your own sex, you were an umbrella. I don't know how it was where you were, but at Hailsham we definitely weren't at all kind towards any signs of gay stuff. The boys especially could do the coolest things. According to Ruth, this was because quite a few of them had done things with each other when they'd been younger, before they'd realised what they were doing. So now they were ridiculously tense about it. I don't know if she was right, but for sure, accusing someone of getting all umbrella could easily end in a fight. So I want to read this bit out because it's got a, a mention of charity shops. Uh, but also it talks about they have collections, so it's kind of a creativity economy almost. I'm trying to do this without giving too many spoilers away, but um, yeah, that everybody at, the, at Hailsham makes these things and you can buy them on certain days. So Ruth says she threw her collection away. I stared at her. You put, you put your collection out with the rubbish. Ruth shook her head, and for the next few moments seemed to be going through in her mind all the different items in her collection. Finally, she said, I put them all in a bin bag, but I couldn't stand the idea of putting them out with the rubbish. So I asked old Keffers, once when he was about to drive off, if he'd take the bin bag to a shop. I knew about charity shops. I'd found it all out. Keffers rummaged in the bag a bit. He didn't know what any of it was. Why should he? And he did this laugh and said no shop he knew would want stuff like that. And I said, but it's good stuff, really good stuff. And he could see I was getting a bit emotional, and he changed his tune then. He said something like, all right, Missy, I'll take it along to the Oxfam people. Then he made a real effort and said, now I've had a closer look, you're right, it is pretty good stuff. He wasn't very convincing, though. I suppose he just took it away and put it in some bin somewhere, but at least I didn't have to know that. Then she smiled and said, you were different, I remember. You were never embarrassed about your collection and you kept it. I wish now I'd done that too. Well, anyway, I think that's about all I wanted to say about Never Let Me Go. Because um, if I go into any more detail, it's going to contain spoilers. And I don't want to do that. Because I actually went into this blind, and I think that's probably the best thing to do. Hopefully, I haven't shared too much to kind of ruin any enjoyment of it. But I would definitely recommend giving it a try, at least. You may be one of the people who doesn't get on with it. And who, you know, just wants to put it down every time they pick it up. But I personally, I, you know, 
I really enjoyed it. I got through it in like two days. So uh, yeah, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. There we have it. That's what I made of Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. And I will see you so soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.